Okay. Um, cool. So let me share my screen. And um, I'm, what I'm going to kind of talk about is how uh, we put this template together that I'm intending for uh, folks running domains programs to be able to use. Um, we can talk about um, how it may be useful, how you use it, and also we can go yeah, okay. into a little bit more about um, other ways to build community because I, re I really want to kind of talk, get more into that discussion. Um, the uh, first thing I'll just kind of show here is what what the heck this this site template is. So um, it's pretty simple. It's just a web page with a form, and all it does is you fill out the form, and it would let your uh, users of your domains program kind of showcase the work they're doing on uh, they're doing on your domain of one's own. So they can put a title in, URL. They can upload a screenshot of their site, give it a category. Uh, put a little description in here of what the heck it is, um, put their name. Uh, you can optionally ask for if you know if they're a student or or faculty or staff or uh, they're belonging to the institution. And then uh, we I have the form set up to ask for an email, um, and um, which you can just use if you need to contact them. But when they fill that out, basically what happens is they get. Uh, uh, makes a post in WordPress for you, um, very similar to a lot of the work that Alan has done with Splots, but um, but basically makes a post so that they don't have to log into WordPress and make a post themselves, but formatted a specific way. Um, so then you can go in and approve it, and it will show up in the home page like this. And I'll go into more detail, but um, you can see the categories, click on them, see the screenshot, the description, the URL. Um, the template's supposed to be pretty simple to get started with and use. Um, and so what I'm going to attempt to do is install this and kind of show you how you would get started using this if this is something you wanted to check out um, and talk about some of the details as I go through really quick. So I'm here on State University, <laughs> and uh, um, I'm just going to install a new WordPress site. <clears throat> And we'll give it the URL community site. How about that? Um, and then I've got a template set up here called Domains Community Sites. And we'll give it the title State U Community. And I'll install it. And this is the best part of my demo where we all get to sit here and wait for this to install. So that's pretty great. Um, but um, should install pretty quickly. Um, what is Levine's law? Doesn't it start with the demo? I think you're already like in line with Levine's law. I uh, Yeah, I literally have that written down in my notes. <laughs> start with the demo. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, I got questions already in there. Is, uh, is Gravity Forms taking the input? Yes. Um, so I'm using Gravity Forms to, to do that. Um, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more in detail about, you know, how if you're unfamiliar with, if people are unfamiliar with Gravity Forms, how that works and um, what to think about there. But here's my shiny new site. It's empty. Um, and while I am kind of talking about how you customize this, I'm going to throw this um, URL in the uh in the chat here, but also you'll see it on my screen the whole time. But feel free to uh, use the form on here and submit things if people want to. Want to. The site will go away um, later, so you know, uh, eventually I'm going to delete it. But um, but yeah, feel free to test that out and see what that that is like from the user experience. But I'm going to go through and kind of talk about how you would customize this um, during that time. So if I log into the WordPress site here, it's um, Pretty pretty basic, um, but uh, there's really three major ways you would need to think about changing this uh, site around. So um, the customizer to do theme stuff, the, uh, I'm using a PostGrid plugin 
to do the sorting of posts and display um, and the actual gravity form itself. And I uh, will mention that um, if this is something you want on domains, um, you know, you can request it. I'll, I'll talk more about that later, but um, we can put the, uh, we do have a license for gravity forms that if you're a domain one's own school, we can set this up uh, for you. So you would just let us know where you want it. We can drop it on your, your server. So, um, but uh, so as uh, posts come in and uh, we already got one in, so that's cool. Um, they come in pending. So basically um, come in here, you can review it really quick. And when it looks good to you, all you have to do is hit publish on it. <clears throat> um, this can be configured in Gravity Forms. So you can, uh, if you didn't want that, if you didn't want to go in and you just want them to show right up on the site, you could do it that way, but I have it configured. I think most people would probably like a pass at it. Um, just make sure they're not getting spam and things like that. Um, so yeah, by default, they come in pending. Um, but uh, you also can, through the Gravity Forms interface, kind of see a little bit more information than just the post. So I will mention here, right on the dashboard, there's a Gravity Forms widget. And if you click on Submit Site from here, um, you can actually go through and you'll see a nice summary of some of the metadata of what they've submitted. So not only the title, but the URL, the creator's name, their email address, and their context if they picked one. So again, I have that set up as, are you students, staff, or faculty? Um, so from here, if you were to click on one of these entries, you should see what they submitted. You got a quick link to go and edit the post um, if you want to, or publish it from there. Um, as well as um, you know, viewing the post from there as well. Um, the nice thing about just using WordPress posts here too is that you can also like bulk approve things pretty easily. So you've got a uh, really easy way if you need to say you've got only one of these is pending, but say they were all pending, you could go in, do uh, ed a bulk edit action in WordPress and just change the status from pending to published and then hit update, and then bam, you've approved all of them. Um, so that is all I'm intending for that to be pretty easy to manage. Um, you also, uh, I also have the Gravity Form set up automatically to email the administrator email of the site. So as soon as you submit something, whoever is listed on that admin account will get an email. That can be changed in the form, and I'll kind of show you where you would do that, what email if you wanted to change that. but. Uh, you will get a notification and a link to, in that email, you'll get a nice link to, hey, here's, this has been submitted, click this link, and you can go in and publish the post. So that makes it a little, hopefully easier to manage. Um, kind of digging into more of the customization and how you would do that, um, especially if you're um, not real familiar or not real comfortable, I should say, with, or, or you just don't want to deal with <laughs> doing this stuff in CSS, I've tried to keep this easy to manage. So if I go um, back to the dashboard, I have a little widget in here um, that just goes right to the three places you would probably need uh, to make customizations. So you can click on customize from here. And I'm by default using a theme called Neve, which is pretty customizable on its own. Um, and I'm kind of leveraging some of that uh, to make these uh, this form easy to manage. So you can go in here and change your colors and, you know, change some of the site colors around. You can change it, flip it into dark mode. I, I've made very a couple little tweaks to the form and the post grid to keep them readable, whether you've got a light background or a dark background, um, things like that. Um, you also in Neve can really, one of the things I like about it is it's, you can make the header look and layout however you want. It, it, they're, it's very customizable in that. So you can kind of dig into that from here as, as well. Um, in addition to that, um, those basic changes, because it's just using gravity forms uh, to do all the work, you could use a different theme. You don't have to stick with this theme. There's really nothing specific about Neve that is 
mandatory for the use of this. So you could change to a different theme if you want. Um, okay, so the other major customization place would be the PostGrid. So um, if I go into the PostGrid plugin or click that handy link on the dashboard, you can go in here and do things from changing like the even the type of grid. I, I'm using this isotope layout, which lets you kind of easily change between post categories um, to uh, the colors of the buttons is all pretty changeable in here. Um, question I'm noticing from Ed, um, I really like the filter, uh, filter buttons. That is from the post grid. That's where this is. So um, that is not theme specific. So you could change to a different theme and um, still keep those layout buttons. Nice thing is this, this post grid plugin just uses um, a, I believe it's just like a generic library called Isotope uh, that uh, makes that sort like that. It's kind of nice. But you could go into the style page here and change uh, button colors and text colors as much as you like. Um, okay, the last and probably the major <laughs> customization point is the form itself. And again, that's, whoops, click done visit here. Um, again, you would do that uh, pretty much mostly in gravity forms. So um, got a handy link here, but you can just go to the forms thing in gravity forms, click on submit site is the name of the form. And gravity form is pretty easy to use. So like, for instance, if you're using this and you're like, yeah, I don't really need to know if there, or I don't even care if there's student staff or faculty, you could easily go in here and just delete that field. Um, and that that is pretty easy to do. And then you'd hit save on your form. In this case, I think I will save that change. <clears throat> um, but you can you know do other things like maybe you want to change uh, some of the descriptive text. So I've got upload a screenshot of the site to show it off. You just click on the screenshot question here, and you change that description right in here. Um, you can also change how Gravity Forms creates the layout of the post. So I have a very basic layout that just has the, the author and the URL and the title or title and description that they put in. But you could change that if you wanted to add maybe more questions to this form and get more into that. Um, you could totally add those questions to the body of the post that get created. So you can. Basically, all you need to do is, if you're in the form in, in Gravity Forms, like I just was, uh, you would just go up to Settings and then Post Creation. Um, and here, uh, you edit a post creation feed in Gravity Forms. So I will edit this one. And you can change every attribute of the post it creates. So you can go in here and decide, OK, well, it's going to be a post, not a page. You can change the status. so. That's how I'm setting it to pending or draft. Honestly, I don't really remember why I picked uh, pending over draft, but the functionality is pretty similar. Um, but the, the end result being when someone fills the form out, they're going to get a post created and you have to go approve it. But maybe you want them to automatically be on the site. Maybe you've put this whole site behind like SSO or something, uh, then you could set them to just be published immediately. Um, there is the, um, it, yeah, and, and here it gets into the actual uh, meat of the post. So I'm having it fill in the title for the post name. I'm having it use the screenshot field of my form as the featured image. Um, and uh, I am pulling in uh, the what is the site for as a category. Um, so the nice thing about that is if someone is just getting started with this and they don't want to dig into Gravity Forms, uh, they can change our categories just by going to WordPress's own categories and adding one. They don't really even have to go in here and change anything to do that. Um, I have um, in this basic version done some very simple markup for of classes and IDs. So if you do want to do some more advanced customization with CSS, you don't have to go through and, and update all of your old posts that already exist. You can go through and do things like use the class of meta info and stuff like that to change the font or uh, the color of certain things in the post. Um, that's um, available to you without having to go back and edit all your old posts. 
Um, then, uh, um, yeah, and I'm currently not using tags for anything on this. So I'm seeing a ton of good questions in the chat that I think actually now would be a good time to kind of mention. So is there spam protection? There is no spam protection uh, save for two things. Uh, Gravity Forms does have some very basic spam protection built into it. Um, they call a honeypot feature, which basically it's it's just checking for like a, a naive script that would submit the form. The other spam protection would be uh, the fact that, you know, uh, entry posts don't get submitted uh, to the front page. You have to go and approve them uh, individually. Um, there's also, I do have comments turned on for these posts, and that is something you can fig configure on the, uh, the Gravity Forms page here. I think, I'm trying to remember, yeah, under the discussion, I have allow comments on. So technically, you could, um, you could uh, disable that, and you wouldn't have to worry about comments as well. Um, but that would just be the same as any WordPress site for, for comments on these posts. Um, adding fields to the form is not likely to break anything for auto updates. That is a question and is uh, just because uh, it's, it's a pretty basic um, uh, gravity form. It, you can pretty easily customize this as long as you do testing to make sure the post looks the way you want. You should be good to go. Um, link checking. There isn't any. <laughs> so uh, this this uh, question was uh, curious about link checking for sites that folks take down. Yeah, this doesn't have a way. This template doesn't have a way to do that. I would potentially run a link checker periodically on this because, of course, all of these posts link to the sites. If you ran a link checker or a link checker plugin in WordPress, you should get you should get an idea of what. Uh, things people have submitted that don't exist anymore, and then you'd have to clean those posts up that are no longer relevant. Um, okay. Um, yeah, and I see um, a few folks are talking about uh, better anti-spam in Gravity Forms, and yeah, um, I am pretty new to Gravity Forms. I, I should mention, because um, I didn't at the start, that most of this template is based off of work, and I definitely need to shout this person out. Um, from my previous job, uh, I was at St. Norbert as an instructional technologist, and we made a very similar site to this using Ninja Forms, because that's the licensing we had. And uh, we did something pretty similar. Um, some of the details are a little bit different, but the idea is definitely the same. So I, I do want to mention, too, that um, what I've done here in Gravity Forms is, is pretty simple and also accomplishable in a lot of different forms solutions inside of WordPress. Um, really, the main thing is you need something that will accept images and allow users to upload images. And you need something that can uh, create posts out of those. But a lot of the forms plugin solutions do do that. Um, yeah, um, so that is kind of the technical part uh, that I wanted to cover of like, how would you use this thing if you've never uh, done anything like this in WordPress before? Um, so I kind of want to shift the conversation a little bit um, and talk about um, like, obviously this is just a tool. This tool itself doesn't build community. But it might be something you can use to build community. So I kind of want to talk about and see maybe suggestions in the chat. If you want to speak up and unmute your mic or turn your camera on, feel free to do that as well. And talk about how you might want to promote this site um, or if you were to use something like this or similar ones. Um, so I've, I've got some ideas, but I'm more curious to hear from uh, other uh, folks from, you know, how do you build community around a single site? Because <laughs> that's not necessarily easy to do. Um, Taylor, in the meantime, it does look like Tim Clark asked a question in the oh, chat. Cool. Yeah. Um, can we see pagination for you to get to 100? Yeah, that's that would be customizable in the PostGrid um, plugin that I'm using. And to be perfectly honest with you, 
I don't remember exactly how I have it configured on this one. Um, is in terms of the maximum length, I would have to look into that um, of the of a page. But yes, it does handle pag uh, pagination of over a certain site. But I don't know if it's a hundred. I think it's a smaller amount than that. Um, does it matter where you would install it? I'm seeing that question. Um, no, it, it doesn't really matter where you install it. In my case here, the um, my first when I first started this uh, and was show, showing like the finished, a finished site with some posts on it, this one's literally just on uh, a subfolder of a uh, subdomain <laughs> off of my shared hosting. But then, you know, over the course of this, I did install it at um, uh, another subdomain on state U. But you could theoretically and put it a lot of places. You could make a community dot your domains program dot com or whatever uh, and put it right there. It could be a subfolder off the root. Um, basically, any place you can put a WordPress install, this would work. And so there's a lot of different options there. Um, it could be a totally different domain too, if you wanted that. Um, will the community template choice show up automatically or do we need to manually add it? Yes, so the community template is something that uh, isn't going to be on your uh, domains instance unless you ask for it. So what I would ask is if you're interested in this and you want me to throw this template on your server to play around with, you can just put in a uh, ticket uh, to support at reclaimhosting.com and we get it installed. Um, that would be, uh, and then I would just ask you from there, hey, where do you want it? Or I can just throw the template on your server so that you can install it wherever you'd like to. Either one will be fine. Hi. Hi. So I, I have a couple ideas for promoting, um, but they may not be all that fancy. Um, That's all right. One one idea is that whenever you're doing an in-class workshop, give yourself three or four minutes to pull up the community site because students really like to see other student examples of work. Um, and so uh, I, I try to do that uh, from from time to time uh, just to get that out there. We we did use community dot as the sort of place for, for ours um, before I broke it. And um, uh the other idea is to have facets that sort of correspond to the kinds of uh, digital assignments that you might be seeing that incorporate a domain of one's own. So a portfolios facet or a research facet or, or whatever it might be within your, you know, your, your sort of local uh, campus. Um, but that way folks could, could kind of see, um, you know, examples and that and, and just just knowing that that's out there i've been assigned this project how can i see what others might have done i think is a good way to get folks engaging with the community site yeah thanks i like the idea of of being of adding facets in terms of you know as assignment needs come up and stuff too because i did mention i don't think i showed it really but i did mention that the way i have this set up right now these are just categories so you could add these really easily at any time after the fact, you know, whatever. Um, so yeah, I really like that, and I hadn't I hadn't thought of that one. Um, I should also mention um, Tim that I, I should have shouted shouted out your work at Muhlenberg too, because that the whole reason we I made one of these at St. Norbert was based on uh, I think a Domains nineteen presentation you gave about yours. So thank you for that. <laughs> um, the um, uh, another thing that uh, we have done, or I've, I've seen folks do, and we did at St. Norbert when I was there, was we would occasionally uh, email um, sort of our faculty that we know are doing things with domains and say, hey, is there anyone who, uh, you know, it, from this assignment we know you do that you feel like really knocked out of the park uh, that would want to add it? Um, so we basically what I mean is we would do some of that, front load some of that and say, hey, when you make this, uh, post your site to this this community site. Uh, but we also did that after the fact too, and tried to, you know, hey, did anyone really seem to enjoy the assignment, and, and should they submit their site there? Um, and another thing that we had some success with was using um, basically bulk email tools in, in that are built into WHMCS to to say, hey. Uh, 
anyone that's, you know, created a domain in the last semester or the last few months or whatever, let's email them and see if they want to submit anything to the site as well. Um, so I'll kind of throw those out too. Suggestions. I just love Tom Woodward's suggestion right there about tying like submissions to courses or disciplines. I remember when Tim Owens and Martha Burtis were playing around with some version of this in like the, the, how would you call it? Like the, the, the ooze of the domain of one's own, like the domain of one's the own. The primordial was, ooze. <laughs> exactly. There it is. They actually linked posts that would come in from blogs to particular classes. And they were linking this, you know, pretty early on with something maybe like gravity forms. And I mm -hmm. really like that because then we could say, here's what's happening across UMW by discipline. And I really love that. So yeah, I love that idea. And then now I'll disappear myself. Remove yourself. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, uh, Alan mentioned tags. Tags will work great right there. Yes, and I didn't even, I didn't put them on the default version of this, but gravity forms is a really straightforward field for letting users put their own tags on things. So uh, that could be a really good option, too, is if you wanted people to have a free form like, hey, just comma separated add tags to your own submission, you could do that. And you could have, uh, you know, an old fashioned like tag cloud in the sidebar really easily or uh, use some of WordPress's built in, you know, taxonomy tools to manage those tags and display them. You also th theoretically, if you wanted to, could have a different post grid that's maybe more tag related instead of category. So you could, I have the post grid set up on a page called um, home, <laughs> um, but you could make another one and call it tags and make a second post grid using that plugin to display it differently based on that. Um, there's a lot of, cause these are just WordPress posts, there's a lot you can do with it. Um, you do a hidden field and provision it via URL, then send out students and the URL would Secret populate. Make sure it was yeah. Yes. Sorry, Taylor. That was a bit much for chat, maybe. But just the idea, like people always botch the tags, right? And so if you move to tags, like there are a couple of different ways gravity forms would let you keep it consistent without having to have people spell it right. You know, econ 101 versus econ space 101, you know, that kind of garbage. So there are some tricks you can do um, to help that out. Yeah, cool. I, I'm and I'm not super familiar with that. I guess the the my naive way of fixing that would have been after the fact because there are a lot of tools that will let you sort of uh, merge, you know, and say, hey, this isn't, you know, take everything in this tag, move it over here, and and get rid of it. Um, so that would be uh, another way you could manage that. But of course, that's manual work. <laughs> so. But hey, Taylor, I had a, another idea. I really appreciated the question on like how to promote this. And um, I just have been thinking about like what structures are already in place at your college or university and maybe kind of piggybacking on some of those structures. So for example, um, we've got an undergraduate research forum. We have a yearly and annual event that showcases service learning projects. We have, I think, twice a year um, career service events. And so, like, I, I saw at one institution, I can't remember where it was, um, might have been Davidson, where they had a, a domains event, you know, where they highlighted some of those domains, which was really cool, but I'm almost wondering, like, is it, would it be beneficial to kind of just, like I said, piggyback on the structures at your institution that are already in place that maybe could partner with a domains community project, um, you know, and then you're not reinventing the wheel all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, I'm going to just mention Chrissy's from St. Norbert and was my uh, former boss. So um, I'll just say that her and I talked a lot about that um, when I was at St. Norbert about like, how do we, there's a lot of 
a lot of things that 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 students are asked to attend and and or asked to participate in that are you know to further themselves professionally or otherwise and we spent a lot of time thinking about where we could position our domains program alongside those things as like hey if you're going to a career fair you should consider doing this and i think that idea linking that with a community site and saying you should maybe make a portfolio site before you go to this career fair and also here's a page showcasing a bunch of portfolios that students have done um and so i i think that also may have some value kind of talking about the um earlier people were asking about link checking and broken link stuff um and um because they have to submit a screenshot, obviously it's it's only a, a small screenshot of one page. But even that, if the the community site serves as kind of a bad archive, that may be still valuable for students to kind of see what other students have done. Um, and uh, even if they can't visit the site anymore, if the, the actual, and that would be up to you. Maybe you want to remove those posts, but I would lean on the side of keeping them personally. Um, if anyone else has questions and stuff, keep feeling free to uh, throw them in the chat um, or, uh, you know, unmute and ask. But uh, again, if anyone else has more ideas on how do you kind of use a tool to help build community, um, also still always looking for that, too. Yeah, I just want to say how um, how cool the form submission um, flexibility is because students could even sort of say at the point of, of submitting to the community site what they want the the preservation um, uh, process to be you know some some students might want their stuff to come down after they've graduated and and that could be you know in an opt-in sort of a field that you build into the form could be something that they stipulate at the point of submitting to the uh, to the community site and then at that point you know as the you know as you're administering it that those instructions are are there if if they're happy with the work to persist beyond their time at the institution you could take a flat file uh sort of um ar archive of that work um free up the domains account and and still continue to maintain that sort of long-term it's also really helpful, I think, for assessment. I think some faculty may want to look back over time to see how their how their use of uh, domains is in their course um, is is changing, and and so having that option at the point of submission, I think, um, makes makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, and I think there, there's a lot of metadata that could be useful there. Um, so you know, more like you could go as simple as just saying, "How long do you want this up?" <laughs> to what's your expected graduation date? Uh, and do you want it after you graduate or do you want this site uh, this post, sorry, after you graduate or not? I think there's a lot of different versions of that that could be really useful. Um, and as far as managing that stuff, you know, if you're, if you're simply putting the questions in Gravity Forms, you can search uh, form submissions from there. Um, you can do a lot of, there's plugins that will let you do a lot of bulk actions to post in, in WordPress that you could mess around with. Um, one thing I didn't really get to do that I wanted to, but I think folks that have more expertise than me with Gravity Forms probably would know more about is I had messed around with a version of this using Gravity Forms to map questions to post meta, uh, custom post meta in WordPress. And I was going to try to display that in the post table, um, which you can do, but I basically ran out of time. <laughs> um, and so basically that would have let you do things like sort by in the post table who's a student faculty or staff member instead of going to gravity forms and doing it there which could be useful for you know bulk actions on posts things like that um uh, i see a conversation about cross-institutional domains stuff and that is something that i obviously am really interested in <laughs> um and it comes up a lot in our community forums that, you know, people are looking for examples and stuff like this. And um, one idea that I don't really, 
I don't really know exactly what it would look like, but one thing that I've thought about is like, what would it, what would it look like if Reclaim had a site like this that people could submit to, but you know, what would need to be different about it? Would people find that valuable, you know, at all? I don't know. <laughs> um, but I, I think that there could be some legs to that idea as well as a more formalized, Hey, you know, your, your school is doing something kind of interesting with domains and you want to, show off work to other schools. I don't know if other folks would find that useful, but that could be kind of interesting. Yeah, I think people would like that too, Tom. And I, I do, one of the things that's interesting to me about that is, you know, it brings up questions that kind of came up adjacent to what we're talking about, about student work or faculty work or staff work and archiving that like for when they want to pull it down. I always feel a little creepy, like taking people's work and putting it on reclaim, like, hey, and if people do it willingly, great. But then there are some some questions we want to do that. But then to go down the creepy road, like I also like the idea of like Alan's broken link checker, like hack as something where you could reserve some examples of that. And there would have to be that idea of like people like, that's fine, I just don't wanna have the site anymore, but you can keep an archive of it. But I I always would like to find a way to do that so that it's mutually agreeable and beneficial and folks feel like they're both getting something out of it. Cause it can quickly seem like, well, I don't want that site up. And I know at UMW, a lot of students reached out and like, take my stuff off UMW blogs now. So it's like, okay, you know, so there's that trick. But if we can figure out a way where it works for everyone, it'd be awesome. Um, Alan mentioned uh, or linked to another plugin use submitted posts um, that I, I haven't heard of, and um, but I'll have to check out because that is another thing here in, in, you know, I made this in Gravity Forms and that's pretty popular, but, and, and we can uh, put this on this template with Gravity Forms uh, licensed on it, on domains uh, for any school that wants it. But I am kind of thinking about like, yeah, that obviously the big down downside is if you're an individual that wants to do something like this, you would need to have a Gravity Forms license of some kind to use it. Um, or the alternative is to use a different tool that, because uh, I'm not doing anything mind blowing with the form, this could be replicated. So I am interested in kind of looking more into alternative form options that have different licensing models or are open source would be awesome, obviously. So. Uh, seeing conversation about uh, adding another URL to the form that leads to a page in another site where folks use a post to describe how the sausage was made. It could be really interesting. I think, I think you could do that a little, a few different ways. Um, you know, in my version of this, I just said like, maybe you want to mention plugins, but maybe you even have a, a individual field that's like, have you written about your site on your site or someplace else? Include it here. Maybe it's optional or, or it could be required. Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot of, lot of legs to that idea. Um, that was one thing that uh, that I, I don't know how to encourage that because I think it's it's hard talk getting students to talk about how they made their site in my experience because a lot of times they have this imposter syndrome of like, well, I did it so other people know exactly how they would do it. Not everyone has that, but I, a lot of people. So how well, do you encourage that? What I was thinking about, Taylor, was we have a little bit of a different situation here because we're a community college, and what we're finding is an enormous amount of the sites that get created are actually by faculty um, to address a particular teaching use, a particular teaching case or situation like that. And w what I can see is this would great, you know, be a showcase. You could see this stuff, and then there'd be an optional link, and we would have basically another site that I've actually been kind of working on, of collecting notes from faculty about. So why did you 
create this site? How is it used in your class? So it's kind of a cross between assignment bank and showcase. And this would be great. We got the showcase. You could go right to it. Or if you're curious about how to use whatever has been done or why this site was created, you got yeah. another way to get to that. Yeah. And it would be an optional field. It wouldn't be on every every entry. Yeah. And that, and people are mentioning here, I think for that type of site, that's a little bit more, hey, write. Um, there's there's options like you could definitely use true writer or true collector yeah. spots for yeah, that. Yeah. It would be really good because in those, you don't need all of the like individual form data that I have built into this. And the great thing about that is those you can still customize like some of the um, – primer text and description text. So you could use that to kind of feed into this. That's really interesting. Yep. Would it be possible to take the best part of those? True Collector have a lot of functionality built in the themes. Is it possible to take part of those and put in a plugin that could be used with multiple themes? That's part, okay. Um, yeah, that's, I think it would uh, to Ed's question. I think it would be possible to to you know break some of this out, um, some of the stuff that uh, that Alan has done with True Collector and True Writer out in the plugin. But it would it it's a lot of custom, <laughs> a lot of custom uh, development, um, obviously, and um, that that's kind of why I'm interested in continuing to explore different like form based plugins. And maybe it's you know a combination of uh, things like Alan mentioned earlier. There's the user submitted forms plugin that I wasn't aware of, um, and um, maybe some maybe the the custom sauce is just making the post formatted the way you like. And uh, so I think there's some opportunity there to explore that further. Well, Taylor, what I, what I like about Gravity Forms and why I like that you chose it is because it's like a tool that lets you do additional things. So you kind of like get them moving with momentum, right? And then if you want to tweak things to whatever extent you've put them in an environment that is malleable, like if you wanted to do kind of what um, Chip Luke was talking about and have kind of these reflective posts about it, that could be a second form tied into this that goes into a category of reflection. And it could live at the bottom of the example thing. You know, if, if you wanted to add plugins or themes and associate it with or like pedagogical strategies so you'd be able to see like what's a community site look like versus, you know, a collector type of site. Like you can you can do all that stuff. You know, the one cautionary thing I'd say after seeing this, you know, play out at, I don't know, lots of different places over time is like keep it as simple as possible for most of the time until you've really committed because <laughs> like it's just so easy to make this incredibly beautiful thing and then you realize keeping it up is such a slog and you just wear out and then the thing drops off and as soon as it's not current then you know everything dies so just make it make it sustainable for you yeah thanks i, I really appreciate you jumping in um yeah that's um that that is the trickiest part with all this. It, and like um, when I when I made the form for this particular template, I really was trying to keep it as simple and non intimidating looking for the user to fill out as possible. Um, I I don't have a lot of uh, design bones in my body, but I was trying to you know make it sure that it, you pull the form up and it wasn't super long or it, it you know as best as I could made it look like it wasn't going to take long to fill out. So to me, that's that's something to consider too, is if you're asking folks to provide more information, you know, is what's optional, what's not optional, even if you have a form, or sorry, a field in a form that's not optional, if it looks intimidating, it's going to contribute to the user potentially clicking on that submit button or clicking on the form and then going, I don't have time to fill this out, and then probably never coming back to it. So I think there's a tricky balance with that too, not only in maintainability long-term, but getting people to do the thing in the first place. I also really like your form design where they were side by side. So it kind of, we've talked about this offline, but like the, the way in which it squishes, so it seems almost like you're submitting less of a form than one where you just scroll down a page. 
And I think there's something to that design piece that's elegant so that you don't feel like you're filling out as long a form as you really are. Yeah. And I think that kind of design piece that, you know, gravity forms and others make easy is, is crucial to making people actually do the work. Yeah. Um, and the nice thing is that's really easy to do in gravity forms, the side by side stuff. Like you literally just, you're literally just dragging a question next to another question and it does that. And you don't have to say, think about the fact that like, Oh, what if someone's filling this out from a phone? And so gravity forms will automatically, you know, put in the right CSS work to make that reflow to not side by side. If your screen's, you know, uh, below a certain size, um, and you don't have to do that manually, which is awesome. Um, and there are, there are other plugins that do similar stuff with their form layouts, uh, which is, which is nice. Um, for someone like me who is not very experienced in like web development, um, there's a lot of, uh, stuff that using a built-in form plugin or using a form plugin, um, that you don't have to worry about because of that. Um, you just get that for free basically. Um, okay. Conversation on alter. All right. Um, yeah. So see a couple people having to jump out. Um, but, um, yeah, we'll, um, I'm going to keep hanging out here till, till, uh, I guess one. Um, and so, you know, keep questions coming or discussion ideas coming if you, uh, have them, but really appreciate people visiting. If you're interested, um, in getting this template available, um, just put in a, uh, just email support at reclaimhosting.com and we will get it dropped on your site um, and installed for you to use. Um, and if you have any other questions about it, you know, definitely uh, send those in as well. So um, before too many people take off, I also kind of want to promote a couple things that will be kind of we're working on right now at, at Reclaim. So this is the first community chat. Uh, we're hoping to have more of them. <laughs> um, we're thinking right now monthly. That's kind of the, the plan. So next month, um, we're still planning it out and figuring everything, but we are uh, we are going to be uh, doing one on February 9th. We'll send information out just like we did for this one um, with details, but just know that that is upcoming. Um, we're going to, I think for right now, we're going to stick to the same time and probably same, you know, Wednesday uh, every, uh, every month. Um, in addition to that, we're also going to be doing a, uh, a newsletter um, and where we'll also be mentioning these, these community chats as well as other things that we're working on and uh, thinking about. Um, so look out for those. It's going to be called Reclaim Roundup. Uh, so you should be seeing those soon. Um, there will be a recording of this posted. Um, I, we will have, I believe we'll have the recording in that newsletter I just mentioned, but um, I think I'm also going to send the recording out to everyone who registered for this event. So uh, you should be able to see that as well. Um, yeah. So um, I'm excited about those. And, and also if there's a topic or something for a community chat that you want to see, uh, you know, also send me that, uh, y'all that register for this, have my email cause I sent it out from that. So feel free to say, Hey, I would love to talk more about, you know, with other admins about this particular topic. I'm very, very open to, uh, those ideas and we'll probably ask you some more questions about them. So I would be very interested in hearing about that. Hey, when you send out the um, the recording, can you make sure the uh, the chats are included? Because there's a lot of good information there. Um, yeah, I've been tracking uh, not word for word what's going on in the chat, but I've been tracking the general conversation in a notes document, keeping up with links and what people have been contributing. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, we can we can definitely send that out as well. Um, I, I think this is just so awesome. One of the things that it uh, solves for me is uh, the way I put the other one together. It really only allowed me to 
uh, feature WordPress sites in the community site. And so this, because it's basically just taking a screenshot and a URL means that Omeka or Scalar or anything else that folks might be building can be featured alongside um, everything. So that's, that's great. I'm, I am curious though, if the, um, if the install script um, could allow a kind of pre-population um, you know, not all the fields in the form would be completed, but it could, it could snag a couple of things just to let you know what's already in there. And because they would just be in draft, you could then, um, you know, kind of, kind of get a sense of what's, what's there. Do you have any thoughts about how some of the backend stuff could be automated, how those things could work together? So in terms of Pre-populating? Do you mean like the the form, so the user doesn't have to put in the title of their site and things like that, or I'm, what do you mean? I'm not thinking of the user so much as I'm thinking of me, because like um, if the if the fields are established um, because you've set up the form, you could write in a kind of MySQL script that then just says, okay, what exists, and let's just go ahead and throw it in there, even if we don't publish it. And then what I would be doing then is going through and just sort of kind of finding the ones that I care about and sort of supplementing that stuff. I, I, sure. I don't so know you're saying I like reading my... Installatron data and saying like, hey, exactly. let's pull from this. Yeah, right. that is something that I really want to be able to, I mean, totally would be technically possible. It's just one of those things where outside of the scope of this version of it. Um, right. But I think, I think, you know, there's, there's a couple things I was thinking about in, like opportunities for automation further on. Like the first one to me is I think instead of asking for a screenshot, I think I could with some work use tools like Puppeteer to take a screenshot on the server and then feed that in. That would yeah. be one that would be really handy. So I have those scripts. I've written that. Um, yeah, I have one too. The tricky thing is like getting that – making all that work together. So like I have a script that lets me feed it a bunch of URLs and take screenshots, but get that into the, you know, my screenshot into the WordPress media library or just someplace else formatted the right way can be done. And it's just something that I haven't done yet. Um, yeah. Basically. But, but yeah, I mean, I guess the, the general question is, um, uh, Gravity Forms allows you to sort of set everything up, get your field names in the database established, and then after that, it's just back to MySQL, right? I would be just doing um, inserts into the tables in WordPress that have already sort of been um, named and and configured by the Gravity Forms, because that's a that's kind of a pain in the neck, honestly. Yeah, um, I think if you wanted to do that in that way, you would be doing it in two places, unfortunately, well, two places in the database, I mean, um, you would be making the post yourself and making entries in Gravity Forms yourself. And the reason it would be that way is Gravity Forms makes its post as sort of like a post submit action, it's some code that it runs. So when, when you fill that form out and hit submit, it goes, great, I've saved the form and now I'm gonna make a post. And what I don't know how to do, and may, there may be a way to do that, but say you manually put stuff in the Gravity Forms table that it's using, I don't know how you would run through and say, hey, for all of these that don't have a post, go make one for me. So gotcha. I think what you would actually have to do is put them in there and the WordPress, you'd be making your own WordPress post on top of that, um, which would be tricky, um, but you know, theoretically doable. It just, it, it would be a lot of custom work to do that. Um, and I think, but you know, I. I I'm saying this totally speculatively because I'm very much new to Gravity Forms. So there may be a way to say, like, there may be a way, like, via, like if Gravity Forms has an API, uh, like, to say, like, hey, you know, run the post creation again for this entry, even though it's not again, it's the first time, you know, things like that sure. may be possible. I'm not quite sure. Okay. Well, thanks. That That's super helpful. I appreciate it. This is great. Thank you. Yeah, you know, for, for the record, you can do all that stuff if you want. So just, you know. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Where's the blog post, Tom? Where's the blog <laughs> post? 
I mean, some of it is is like the old stuff we did with Georgetown, remember, with Phantom JS. So old, Absolutely. I don't think Puppeteer yeah. existed back then. But it it is. I have old stuff, Taylor. If you want to see like what's the cycle from getting the URL, um, running the whatever Puppeteer Phantom JS to get the screenshot, and then importing it into the WordPress Media Library. And associating it with a post like I have stuff you know is old now <laughs> and I, I could probably do it a lot better but like I have you know tons of random stuff like that because this is like an interesting historical problem that we've yeah, seen like Jim exactly. referenced like like this is from the beginning and we've done this in like so many different institutions with so many different patterns and you get into Tim's questions which I think are a mix of like are you reading the Installatron data? You know, then you get into the, inevitably the question of permissions. And if you're going to have to ask permissions to put the thing publicly, does that route you back into a manual process? You know, and, you know, what we've done too with, with things is like if it's WordPress or let's say it's one of three things we understand well, I don't know, Scalar, Omeka, WordPress, what's the api and what can we generate automatically based on things we know can we like unfurl data so we just put in one url almost use like a press it type of action from the site and then what can we automate there like it's fun stuff to think about and i think you can get to much better places but like you know it would be almost fun to see like these things happen each time like i know the permission thing will get up i know expiration will get up i know requests to take down will come along you know like the, it's just you know same problems different group new people thinking about yeah, it exactly but did you find when you were dealing with installatron data because you did tap into that and you could kind of pull that stuff in but then there was questions about is it only wordpress is it WordPress Omega and Scalar or right. like what was some of the limits you came up? I don't want to turn this into obviously, you know, sidetrack, but I'm interested in one of those limits because that was years ago now and I almost forgot. Some. Yeah, we did it. So one, we did a WordPress version, I think with Tim's help um, based on some sort of script output um, as, as I recall, but recently, uh, based on some conversation with John Stewart, like I was looking much more into WHM and, and some of the the more core kind of data sources. So we have, I have a bunch of crap written down someplace like that I want to get back to that's about getting that data and using it more mechanically, you know, both at the like private, just like what in the hell is going on across all these things and how do I know stuff, but then it would map over nicely to some of the public conversations we're having here. Um, but it's just like, you know, I just I haven't gotten back to it because I'm doing stupid other stuff. There's the balance, like Ed says, between like, because I'm like you, I want to go down rabbit holes with this and see if there's a way. It's kind of like the edgy blue idea. Can you pull everything together cleanly and make it work? But Ed, to your point, simple and working with a form is is a beautiful thing so i don't want to i don't want to take away from what you've done here taylor which is awesome no i i 100 percent like th this is where my all of these things are brought up like what if we pulled in data or you know we have this data from installatron or we we all of that ma making this template was an exercise for me in limiting <laughs> <laughs> the functionality because I would have taken a year to make it otherwise, especially because I'm not very comfortable with some of the, the tech required to do some of that. So yeah, it's a tricky balance. And, you know, I was trying to making this, I was really trying to make something that would work for someone who like just got domains and was like, how do we share, you know, what people are doing and then they could maybe grow with it. Right. And say like, Hey, we started with a simple form and eventually we maybe, you know, added some uh, other fields that we wanted or changed the, the theme of the site a little bit. Or eventually we started experimenting with, well, how do we get like bulk, you know, more uh, automated, uh, you know, imports of some of these things. I mean, my, my dream version of this would be like in, in your cPanel, users could click a little button that's like, I want my site featured. And it would pull in all the metadata of the site 
and just put it right on. Like that's that's my sort of a dream version of this, but that would require a lot of hooking in the C panel and doing a lot of things that would be probably not super sustainable, but are probably possible. You know, and if you were automating to that degree, I would be really interested in seeing what we could get in the WordPress portal that leads to cPanel. Sure. You know, right now we can't even see what people's URLs are without logging into the separate system. And so the more you could get that mm -hmm. consolidated in that one WordPress front area. That's a good, um, I'm, I'm literally, sorry, I'm, I'm literally looking over here because I'm going to take some notes because, yeah, the idea of having more metadata about domains inside of that um, main front end is interesting to me and I, i'm uh and it is related to some other things that some other projects i'm thinking about too so i'm gonna write down like how, how what would be the best way to do that and do it well <laughs> um because i think for a lot of people i mean certainly when i was uh doing domains admin stuff at saint norbert like 90 percent of what i needed to do i could do from the wordpress front end without going into whm cs and whm so yeah the 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 gravity form is public facing, right? Um, on the community site. Yep. So, um, and it's a it's a consistent URL. It's not dynamically generated. Correct. If, if I understand that. So yeah, in the navigation, right from the, you know, the get started page, um, uh, submit my site could be a link right up there. It just takes you. You don't even have to go to the community site front page. Sure. It just takes you right into the um to the form to complete it and and uh yeah that yeah, way that would be pretty you know, close. we could just train all all of our folks to say hey if you have something you're proud of just go right here and and submit it and it'll show up in the community portal yeah um that'd be that'd be really interesting um uh, the other kind of thing similar to that i think that would be kind of cool is um and again a uh, I'm very good about talking about tech that I don't understand in that, uh, sorry, wishing things from tech that I don't understand is what I mean. Um, but uh, like, I think of like, like if you've ever seen like the support widget that a lot of, a lot of sites have from Zendesk, it's usually built in with a little, little like question mark bubble. And they're just using some JavaScript to load that widget in on every, they put it in like the footer of their, their site and it loads that in on top of the page. Um, there's a lot of things like that, but, Something like that that could pop up a form kind of like this, but then capture metadata from the site you were already looking at. Uh, you know, some combination of that to make that even easier for folks to submit would be really interesting to me, but would be probably pretty complicated. I mean, given that we can in default install plugins in WordPress like depending on where you want this thing to show up. Now, other things like Omeka and Scala, I think would would become a little messier, but like with with things that are easy and that have APIs, like having all that data and essentially iframing your gravity form into a chat window or pre-provisioning the URL parameters such that the gravity form fields are filled out based on the thing that you're coming from. Like that's all pretty straightforward. Like not a big deal. You just need to know where does that community site live? Um, that, that, that'd be like the hardest thing to figure out, honestly. Um, and then it's an opt-in type of thing from the, from the core source. And like that gets you out of a lot of hassle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I don't mean, Tom, you mentioned earlier, if, if I wanted to look at any of the stuff you had done with phantom JS and yeah, if you wanted to send that to me, I would totally look at that. So yeah, I'll dig it up. I respond. And to I'll, that. If you want the, I, I've got this stuff too on like where data lives um, throughout the the various D WHM and stuff and like what you can do with some of the API calls. Sure. So I have like, I have like a document of stuff, like here's where things are. So when I get like, I don't know, less lazy or more motivated or something, like I'm coming back to it. I took all the notes. I like did the homework, but sure. like haven't done the fun part of it. So Gotcha. Yeah, I would I would definitely be interested to look through some of that. Well, um, 
if anyone else has something we can we can uh i can definitely uh talk about it but i think we're we're like 10 minutes over at this point and i don't want to take up too much people's time so um i think we'll we'll call it here but um i'm really really uh encouraged by the discussions and and uh it was great seeing everybody here and hearing from folks and i'm pretty excited to keep these going you know uh in future topics and stuff so we should have some more information on further community chats soon so thank you all for coming so taylor mm -hmm. I, you know i popped it into the chat but um would reclaims license allow me to play with gravity forms on maybe one site yeah or one multi-site installation, would you be able to install that for me? And I should just write an email to put a ticket in? As long as we are posting it, it should be fine. Um, the way the yeah. terms of our license are, um, should be fine. Oh, that'd yep. be great. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Should we pause the recording? Yeah, I'm going to stop it here.